Vince Higgs. Uh, graduated Diedrich High School in 2010 and work at Higgs Welding in Diedrich now. You DJed for quite a while years ago. Um, what got you interested interested in DJing? Um, well, I wasn't really interested in it. I used to play drums only and had somebody ask me to DJ their wedding and I never DJed or wanted to or had plans to and just use the band's stuff to DJ, and so that's how it started. How many years exactly did you do it for? Um, I think that was 2013 or 14, so almost 10 years, 10 years. What makes DJing so important? Um, I think there's a lot of times people are stressed out with work or, other things and and they like to go and blow off some steam and a dj will play a few songs that they like or favorite songs and and good feel good songs party songs and help people blow off some steam forget about things that are going on and maybe just have some fun get away my favorite part is probably always as soon as you get stuff set up for the first time so you plug everything in get it all turned on and when you play that first song and hear it back to you the first time and get it all turned up usually when nobody's there and it's just kind of me turn it all on turn it way up and play a song that i really like that's always been my favorite part when did you realize that this was something that you could do well the first wedding that i did before the end of the night i had five different people come up and want cards which i didn't have or contact info and stuff and so right off the bat i thought oh man there's a need for this and I was having fun, so. Toughest obstacles. Probably, there's been a couple times when I was still getting stuff figured out on, on how to make it all work, where Wi-Fi was cutting in and out during some weddings, probably, and I had to have important songs, you know, at, at important times for the night. So there were some obstacles there on trying to get internet through my phone or the computer and save songs and not have downtime and not leave everybody hanging there so that was probably the toughest that or if i i forget a lot of stuff because i'm always last minute throw everything in and get to where i'm going and would forget a cord or a router or, or power cords or something like that so i have to make it work without it and switch things around try and get it to work so one of those two. All the equipment that you used, was it yours? Yeah, for the most part. Um, it was all mine. Either stuff that I bought for DJing or from playing music in the band. Um, except a couple times, maybe if uh, if I did some really big stuff, I would I would rent some things from, from some other guys and had part ownership in some other sound stuff with some guys. But uh, else, yeah, it was usually all mine. The f biggest thing that I've learned is probably how to mix the music on how to sound good, not be just loud. A lot of people just turn music up, you know, and there's that's not really the right way. There's different tones and different ways to EQ it um, so that it sounds good when it's coming at you instead of just like blaring in your ear. That and and probably feedback with the microphones and, and plugging that stuff in and twer tweaking all that stuff. Um, was never good at that, really. Whenever we would play music, everybody else would do that because I was just the drummer. But then when I had to have the mic, um, had to figure all that stuff out, so. Funniest moment, man. I'm sure there's a thousand different things that happen and I've laughed harder and, and was way better, but the only thing that sticks out in my mind off the top of my head was a Brummer wedding in T-Town that was right when they were doing the remodel before it burnt and they rebuilt, but the remodel and Wi-Fi was kicking in and out. So I was using my phone and some other stuff and the wedding party song was Chattahoochee by Alan Jackson. And the artwork and, and the whole like page wouldn't load. So I just saw Chattahoochee and there's only one, so like I just put it in and I was lining a lot of stuff up and people were talking to me and so I just put it in there and I do some talking on the mic and get everybody out there and Chattahoochee starts and I'm busy working on other things but I know like in my ear that 
like something is a little bit off on this song and I should have like stopped and checked it out but I was worried about other things and so the long intro comes in and then like the words come in and it's the Spanish Mexican version and everybody turns and looks at me and I'm like oh <laughs> so I stopped it and made it into a joke or something and it was fine but yeah that was that was a big whoops on my part that I always thought was pretty funny <laughs> the most people I've DJ four is got to be cruise night um, this past year, so I think thirty eight hundred, four thousand people or more, something like that. Um, so, but that's a different event, probably. Um, else, it was either Blacktop New Year's Eve one time, or there's a couple times Eric Kenner's outside under the whole canopy out in the little alley and inside all the way through and. I mean, inside couldn't hear, I guess, but there was a lot of people there that night. And Blacktop New Year's Eve couldn't get anybody else in that place or outside it. Um, but cruise night, biggest, biggest crowd. Party, or you bring the party for New Year's. When people say that, but the whole night of the New Year's party and how packed it is, what's that mean to you? Well, it's awesome. Um, I don't know that people would come to see me. I think it's just, I don't know, it's like a snowball. A few people are gonna be there. And that's as good a reason as any, I guess. It's, I don't know that it's me playing, but that's just where everybody will decide to go. But um, yeah, it's cool. It's cool when you're playing and, and people come inside, you know, that I know and they come up and they're like, you cannot even park out here. There's there's no room the, and they can't get in the door and there are people outside and it, I mean, you can't even move, it's so packed, which, which is kind of annoying sometimes, but it's also, it's cool sometimes. I wanna see everybody's drink up in the air. Everybody's hit. We got 15 seconds. Everybody's drink up. You all got drinks. We got shots. Here we go. We got five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Favorite songs I like to play, I mean, it depends on the setting and the crowd, the occasion, but there's there's songs that are mixed really well, and then there's songs that are, I would call them like just generic songs, and a lot of them are really good songs, but the mix isn't as good. So like when you play them through the speakers, there's some songs that you would maybe like turn if you were listening to them in your car or something, but when you play them through like a, a professional sound system they just sound phenomenal and I've always loved the music so whenever I would get to play some of those songs that maybe wouldn't always be like the best um, like songs you would think of I always like the ones that sounded the best like when you go out there and and you're listening to it, it's like man this is just a it's a good song but it also sounds really good has good mix and good drums and, and highs and lows and speeds up and slows down and those, those are my favorite where do you get all of your energy from? <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess I've always had it. Um, <clears throat> I, yeah, I mean, I used to run cross country in high school. Dietrich was too small for track, but would run cross country and, and my mom would always say, oh, you're, you're born to run or something. You know, uh, I was, I was a ring bearer in my aunt and uncle's wedding and like just ran down the aisle. So I've just always been full of energy and running around. Favorite band is Alabama. So that's two different questions. Um, favorite band is Alabama. Favorite artist is Phil Collins.
Do you have any hidden secrets about DJ? Hidden secrets? Um, yeah, I mean, you get a lot of requests and, and uh, I mean, I would always try and please everybody, but if I know songs are duds, I would never play them. So, and, and I would have to lie or say I was getting to it or whatever, but, and sometimes I would just come out and tell them. But you, if one person wants to hear it, you want to make everybody happy, but you can't sacrifice everything that's going on. But um, that and you do, you know, you know some of these bigger um, like bar nights and stuff, and they have party buses that come in. And uh, they always come up. Everybody's having a blast. And my goal is everybody to have fun. But also, you want the bar to make money because the bar hires you to play. So you want them to come out good. And that lets them hire you back. So the party bus, the people always come up. And they always come up to you and say, hey, can you announce the party bus is leaving? And you always, I always tell them, yeah. But you never do it because you announce the party bus is leaving. You know, that whole bus is gone. So I'd always, yeah, sure. Never do it. That way they stay there as long as possible. <laughs> Favorite places to play? Um, man. Blacktop New Year's Eve was always fun. Um, Kenner's was always a blast. Casbar, Casbar's Halloween party was always fun. Harry's and Harry's uh, ugly Christmas sweater. Contest was always a blast, always a good time. Um, yeah, weddings, a lot of weddings over the years. Uh, good crowds and good good times, good people. So I don't know that there's a favorite place, but uh, just usually depends on the people that are there and, and the crowd um, was, was always the best part. When you hear DJing isn't the same without Vince, what goes through your mind? Probably that's better off. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you so unique compared to all other DJs? Um, I don't know that I'm any better or different at all, but I, I, I feel like I have a good mix coming through, but also pay attention to the crowd you know, who's out there and if they're feeling a certain type of music or not feeling it, to kind of try and play off of that, not just have a playlist of things that I'm gonna run through. Um, that and and just make sure that everybody has fun, whether that's going out and, and messing around with them or knowing to steer towards a certain other type of music or just, just being able to be, um, I don't know, just be open to anything and, and accommodate to what's what's going on around me I guess best advice you have received um, probably whenever I got the wireless mixer um, a friend of mine that I get stuff from in town um, got me set up with a with a wireless mixer so that I can control things from away from the table else I was always running back up to the table making changes and then running back out there but then I could do it out on the floor so that was that was a big changer who's had the biggest impact on your life when it comes to DJ who's had the biggest impact um, I bought all my stuff from Kevin Calkins in town FTS sound he helped me a lot showed me things in his studio uh, helped me out with with getting the right equipment pairing it up how to mix an EQ um, different things I would have never known you know he helped me out with that along with equipment I, I didn't know I needed, but he always had it there and I was like, oh man, I would see it and, and think I gotta have this. So Kevin, yeah, and uh, and my buddy Carson Prummer um, has helped me a lot too, you know, from, from playing in the band together and stuff and, and he loves music just as much as I do and um, would help me either with chair equipment or he'd come and help me set stuff up or I, you know, would always call him since he was more a sound guy than I was. He went to school for it, so um, he knew what he was doing, and I would call him a few times. There were several times I'd have to call him and say, hey, dude, 
how do you do this? This is my problem. How do you fix it? And he he would always bail me out. So, and he knew a lot of times, like he could tell, oh shit, Vince is MP and shy. He needs my help. <laughs> so yeah, those two always always came through for me. Advice to younger DJs. Um, probably like what I said earlier about mixing the sound. Um to get the sound right, make sure that it's not, I mean, I, a lot of people probably say that I play too loud, but I feel like if it was too loud, at least it still sounded good. Um, you go a lot of places, at least, you know, I pick it up that it's loud or there's way too much bass or not even close to enough, or it's, it's got all the highs turned way up. Um, and it just, it just needs tweaked. So I would say that's the biggest advice I would give is learn how to mix music or, and sound and uh, make sure that you got a good mix coming through. Do you still play gigs? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I probably always will. As far as maybe DJ once or twice um, and then play the drums when I get time and get the chance. You don't DJ near as much as you used to, but do you still miss it all the time by when you did it previously? Mm, no. No, um, I think I just did it so much in sh such a short amount of time that, I mean, I'm, I don't really miss it. I miss it when I'm doing it. I'm like, man, yeah, this is cool. I, I like playing the music and stuff, but I don't ever like just miss it out of nowhere. Um, and I, I get one or two a year that I do now and, and that's enough to, to scratch my itch. So no, I don't really just out and miss it. When did you realize DJing was something you wanted to lay low on? Um, I don't know a time period, but I just, I kind of looked at the calendar and, and there was stuff getting booked out, like weddings and stuff, 18, 20 months in advance. And I had a hard time saying no for a long time. So I would, I would always book it. And then, you know, almost two years go by and then stuff's always going on. And you've got this, this commitment from, you know, a year and a half prior that that you can't back out on and so you gotta miss this and that and and I looked at the schedule and thought man I'm I've got stuff that's that's over a year out it's gonna take a while to even get out of this so that's when I realized I need to put the brakes on it just because it's, it's gonna take a while to get out of it so once I saw that I you know getting that far out um, knew, knew that was probably time what's the support been like from your family that's been good. Um, I used to like just be running around all the time um, and forget stuff all the time. So I'd always be, every time, call my mom or my sister or my brother, somebody, and say, hey, uh, I forgot this. You need to go in my house, in this room, and they don't know what they're looking for. And I would try and explain it to them, but they would always help me out. And then uh, got married and, and started slowing down as far as DJing goes. And Stephanie's been great, and same thing with Colin. She would she would help me bring this or bring that or help me set up and stuff. And uh, so yeah, overall support's always been been pretty good. And life in general, who is your biggest role model? Uh, that's got to be my dad. Um, so, yeah, um, always tried to follow in his footsteps. When I was five, I was kind of old enough to realize what was going on, and, and dad had a drum set from when he would play. And he helped me set it up, and I just wanted to play because he played. And then he had horses, and I did horses because he was in horses. And then we always go hunting together and, and do everything together and yeah went to uh, this step to that step and now work at the shop and have always just been right there with him and trying to do what he does and and live up to his expectations and always watch him and try and learn from him and and uh, try to be him so. as far as all the time you spent in the DJing but also the people who have supported you from day one to where you're at now tell them all thank you you know a thousand times um the people that have hired me to do weddings thank you bar owners uh just people doing private events 
even there's a couple times you know T Town boys have won state seems like all the time, so they would always call and like we're on our way home you know and I would get my stuff and throw it together and run out wherever and we'd set it up and play and and a couple times you know didn't want anything but they would still pass tip bucket around and stuff and that was cool but uh, thank you to anybody booked a wedding that uh, you know that had a a party or an event or anything and had me out there that's fun uh, thank you guys bar owners that's had me back several times over and over and over uh, thank you guys um, and thank everybody that comes out you know that uh, that comes out either that happens to be there and hangs out for a while or or used to follow and come around wherever I was uh, anybody that uh, would come up and, and hang out and say hi and and anybody that would have fun and and sing songs and mess around and and make it into a good time thank you guys um, yeah just thank everybody that uh, that ever came out and and supported me while I was playing Vince Hanks 2010 Diederich High School grad former DJ um, thanks for taking the time with me, Vince. I really appreciate it. You were one of the best, and uh, maybe someday you'll get a chance to, to keep DJing more and more. Yeah, hey, thank you, Tyler. I've uh, been trying to get this set up for, what, two years or more, it seemed like, but uh, finally got it set up, so thanks for having me.